Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this cutting board. It's a little bit different than the other ones that we've made. Let me show you how. Hey, before I forget, if you could like and subscribe and support us by watching all the videos that you care to watch, we'd appreciate it. Usually I'm going a quarter inch deep, but this time I went 14 hundredths on our little well. Juice rim's not as wide as it used to be. And I created a little area here where you could personalize it. Cut my walnut and my maple to rough lengths. Ran it through the table saw to get my widths. And manhandle this big old glue rack. Got a new glue roller because I forgot to clean the last one and poured out a lot of glue and rolled it all out. A lot of glue. Quick as I could, put it in the glue rack. After about an hour, I come back and I check and see if I can scrape the glue at all. And I take it out and I scrape the glue while it's a little bit soft, but tiny bit hard so I don't have to feed it through my sander. Scrape both sides while it's still soft and put it back in the clamp. Next day, take it out of the clamp, take over the miter saw and flush it up on the ends. Then feed it through the table saw and flush up the other end. You know how I love this sander. Fire that bad boy up, feed it through, just wheel down until it just starts to make a little contact for the first pass. What's nice about this is you can set the scale back to zero and then you know exactly how much you're taking off at a time. Right here we're taking off 100. It takes a couple passes, but it comes out real nice and smooth. When this side's done, we flip it over and sand the other side smooth. Nice and smooth, then over on the CNC to get it profiled. This is why I don't cut it to dimension at the table saw or on the miter saw. This is the well that I cut 14 hundredths deep all the way around. It takes a while, like eight minutes, but I sped it up just to not bore you. So when it's all done doing the well, I come back with the cove bit and I cut the juice rim all the way around. Well, I thought it was good, and I decided to make it a little deeper, and I made a big whoopsie. But never fear, I'm just gonna go ahead and take it down to that level, and we'll start all over again. Except that the bit slipped, and we started digging all the way through the piece. Nothing we can't fix. Just went ahead and surfaced the whole thing back down to the level. Took a couple passes and we started all over again. Just gotta love doing something twice. Wait a minute, here's something we only did once.
On the bottom I cut this profile and this is a rough climb cut. I leave two one hundredths when I do this profile in the finger holes as well. Then when the rough's done I come back with a conventional pass and I take the two one hundredths off all the way around. This finish pass makes for a nice clean finish. And finally we're done. We take it over to the router table and we flush trim all the high parts and get it nice and smooth. It's really difficult to get the top and bottom profile to match on the CNC so I just leave a little off and then come back and clean it up here on the router table with the flush trim bit. And then I get to sand. Some machining marks and burn marks that need to be sanded out. I start with 80 then eventually work up to 150 and Eventually, I'm going to do a nice finish with 220. Just break over the edges with the 150. Use a little sanding block in the hard to get places. Do a 220 finish. I always finish my projects with hand sanding. And then Time to add oil. Lots of oil. Really does wonders for the hands and makes them nice and soft. And here it is. All finished. So now that we're all done, a couple things I learned. Didn't have to make it that thick in the first place. Other thing I learned is I don't like just all walnut or all maple. I like to mix it up a little bit. I think this is the best cutting board I've made so far to date. So my next project might have something to do with one of these. So we'll see you next time.